Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Short Term Rentals with the amazing TJ Tijani in the house. How are yes, you doing? Yes sir, doing good, doing good. <laughs> I am doing great, feeling great. Uh, ready to get to the value, but let's educate the people. That's right. And no better than short term rentals. Because Absolutely. That's the investment of the future. Absolutely. Um, so in the last episode, you mentioned a few of the things that we could do to improve um, the current property that we had. But what are some of the top features that you have seen in your career that your visitors are looking for? Hmm. So and this is a good question, because this question is solely going to be contingent upon who you're serving. Because who you're serving, you know, to be that's what's going to base what they're actually looking for, right? Sometimes you might be serving a client base or your guest base, I should say, that they just want to get some rest. They plan on not being there a lot. They're just coming home and they're resting. They could be workers. They could be they could be weekend travelers that are going to be out enjoying the city. They just come in to sleep. It just depends. Then you could then you could serve somebody that is going to spend quite some time there. Matter of fact, not only are they going to spend time there, but they plan on working there quite a bit as well. So this is this is somebody that is going to take up more of your electricity. This is somebody that's going to need super fast Wi-Fi. You're going to make sure that you know you need to make sure that they, you have coffee that is quality coffee station that they can utilize and use. Um, things like that. So um, so it depends on who you're serving. And a lot of times folks that we serve, a lot of our a lot of our spots are medical medical travelers. We serve our weekend travelers. Uh, we serve people that are coming for some type of event, some type of convention or whatever. We serve a lot of families as well. Um, and we serve our workers, people that travel on business for business reason or um, they could be nomadic because understand the landscape of business travel has changed. So people are literally just working from home now. Um, and a lot of people, because they work from home, even though they're not traveling for business, they would just want to book like an Airbnb because they want to get away because they want a different atmosphere. They want a different they want a different uh, space to work in. That way it can be as productive as possible. And so, um, you know, when when it comes to setting up your units. Remember that question, who are you serving? And that and and that will also let you know what your guests are actually looking for in your particular property. Because our, we serve by eight different avatars and all eight of them look for something totally different. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's okay. And in your listing, it'll be the same true for your listing. You'll serve multiple avatars and they're each going to offer multiple things. And not that the other things that the other people are not looking for aren't there. They're there, but they just yeah. they just focused on other things that you also offer. Things like that. So, so you kind of give that variety of different like amenities and features within your complex. Yes. You want to, you, you know, it's not so much that you give a variety. You just make sure that you have things in your listing for that avatar that's going to come in there. That's more so what it is. And um, and a lot of times they overlap, right? You have your weekend traveler who wants coffee just as much as their traveling nurse, right? <laughs> so sometimes a lot of times they do overlap. Um, but but at the same time, you know, you, you want to make sure that you are understanding and have at minimum done the research to see who's going to be staying at your property and set it up just to just to address them and you'll be in good shape. That's right. And um, so what are some of the tools that you use for knowing what features to add into your um, listings? So it, a lot of times to knowing what features to, to, to add is also knowing um, who's staying there. So it literally is like full circle in everything that we've talked about in terms of who. Because that when you when you know who, you're going to be able to know what features that you need. Right. And certain avatars don't need certain things. Right. So, you know, one of you like your sleep mixes, for example, I, I like to call a sleep mix, but sleep oh. mix is literally instead of <laughs> instead of like your unit mix. Right. How many bedrooms or bathrooms it's like sleep mix? How many beds are well, how are your beds? What is your sleep? bed set up. Do you have a king in this room? You got two queens in this room. You got a king, whatever the case, you got a sleeper sofa. So your sleep mix also plays a heavy, heavy role. Understand that a lot of times people value traditional beds. Like they want normal beds with a nice, comfortable mattress. So they value that above bunk beds, above sleeper sofas. And so the more regular beds you can offer, the better. Now your listing may be more conducive to offer a bunk bed or a sleeper sofa, because at the end of the day, it's still, you want as many regular beds as possible, but at the end of the day, still, the more heads you can sleep, the more money you'll make. <laughs> so, so you got to keep that in mind as well. So your sleep mix 
plays a role and comes in a, plays a role of the type of people that will book your spot. That's right. And I feel like that's a really important point because like if you were to have a family and they have so many kids, they're not going to have like one bed per kid. Probably they're used to already having the bunk bed that exactly. they had at home. So if you had that as a possibility within your listing, then just by switching a couple of beds for a bunk bed, you can easily attract another audience. 100%. 100%. And that's why I recommend people, if you get bunk beds, don't get the cheap one that that is like a twin size get if you can if your room can fit it get a queen bunk bed Ooh. get a queen because it's still great for kids and toddlers and adults and i feel like it also gives a different vibe it does because like if at home they used to have let's say a twin bed yeah a bunk bed right um when they get to the airbnb they are like I can definitely tell this is an Airbnb mm -hmm. because yes. I feel like I'm sleeping in a much nicer place. Yes. Right? Yes. That's interesting. What other, so you mentioned the sleep mix. What other mixes do you have within your properties? <laughs> I mean, your sleep mix is the most popular one um, because that literally, you know, you can have, uh, say you have a duplex building. Oh. You can literally have a duplex building. And I've done this because I split tested this. And we had two different sleep mixes in these buildings. Uh, this is a duplex and each unit had three bedrooms oh. and one unit had two kings and one queen, two kings, one queen That's and a sleeper big. sofa that sleeps eight. So think about it. Now you have two queens. That's uh, two kings, two kings. That's four. Then you have another bed with a queen. That's six. Then you have a sleeper sofa. That's a queen size sleeper. That's eight people. Then at the other unit upstairs, I did one king. The other room that has a, the other king, I did two queens. Oh. And then I still did the last queen and then the sleeper sofa. So that means what? This unit sleeps 10 people. Could you guess which one made more money? I'm thinking the one that had the 10 people? Absolutely. Awesome. I recommend 100% for everybody to have a king bed if you can. If you can help it, do a king. Even if it's, if it's a one bedroom, I'd recommend a king in there. Do a king bed. Because people like king beds and just having one king that makes it attractive. So what I learned in that process is that having two kings is less attractive, though, than having one king and two queens. Interesting. Because now you have, you can sleep more people mm -hmm. and the queens are still attractive, but they don't necessarily need two kings. They only need one. I'm, it, and that's, it's just usually the case. And trust me, we tested this theory for two years. We left this property up the oh, same wow. way for two years. So we have data on this. So it's always interesting when you, when you split test and you see what is an ideal sleep mix for your guests. Because like I said, we found that having a king is important, 100%. But you don't necessarily need two kings to be just as proper. Now, if it's, if the option is a king, a queen, and the other room is two queen uh, is is another queen. So if it's a king queen queen or a king king queen, then the, the then the choice should be king king queen. But if the option is king two queens king, queen, then then the choice if, if the option is king two queens king or king king queen, then the option should be king two queens king. Yeah. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about mattresses. No kidding. I should probably take a little nap now. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, it's super interesting how like all of these tiny little details, you actually have the chance to split test them and make sure that they do work for the audience that you're targeting. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, it gives you the flexibility to have more uh, of a variety, I guess, of the people that you're receiving. Yes. So, and even if you have one unit um, instead of like a duplex, you can still test it for a certain period of time you can. and then uh, change the whole setup and test a, a different um, sleep mix in this case. 100%. Now, um, you were mentioning that um, we have to be careful not to add way too many um, cool things because then it turns into a less attractive listing. Um, but I've been hearing quite a bit of stuff about the cookware and dinnerware. Uh, is it important to provide that within your list? Well, you know, and I'm going to just go back to something you just said. And, uh, it's important not to have as many cool things because then it can start working against your listing. That's not necessarily the case. Have as many cool things as you can, oh. but make sure that you can actually control and handle those cool things that you add. Now, if you add some cool stuff to your listing, but you can't maintain it, then it's gonna start working against you. 
So for 100%. whoever is listening, if you were planning on add or, adding a statue of a bumblebee on your listing, don't do that because <laughs> you're not going to be able to maintain it. So. Exactly. Make sure, you, make sure your cleaners like clean it and wipe it down and keep it shiny. That's right. Because then if it starts okay. getting dirty and dusty, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> then, then now they, that, that's just one more thing that's dirty. And trust me, everything that collects dirt, dirt and dust, that goes against you. So say even just that one statue, even if you just don't take care of that statue, that can work against you. That's right. It could be a super cool feature. <laughs> it could be a super cool feature. Once it begins, but if you don't maintain it, totally against you. 100%. Um, so um, going back to my question, though, like when it comes to dinnerware and cookware, is it important to provide it? Because to be honest, I've been into a couple of Airbnb places and I mean, they didn't have it. It was not the end of the world because like, I'm kind of flexible in that situation. Mm -hmm. But what I don't think everyone is as flexible as I was uh, when it comes to Airbnb. So yes. like, is it important to have that? Yeah, when it comes to dinnerware and cookware, not only should you have dinnerware and cookware, you should have a quality set of dinnerware and cookware. Um, understand that being able to have a full kitchen and being able to cook in this kitchen is one of the things that separates us as short-term rental hosts and investors from a hotel. This is one of the things that allows us to provide a much totally different experience than what a hotel could provide is the fact that you have a full kitchen and you are able to bring your entire family or your large group all together. Instead of having to rent multiple hotels, you can bring them all in one and all eat together and break bread together and cook together, have an entire experience that you would have outside of a hotel. So not only should you have a cooking set, but you shouldn't cheapen it either. You should have a quality set because, again, if you have a set that's cheap, that can go against you. Now it's like now your review is going to say he has cheap cookware. <laughs> <laughs> they not the fact that you have cookware is amazing, but they're going to automatically bypass that. He's going to say it's cheap, and here's four stars instead of five because you have cheap cookware, <laughs> right? So not only should you have it, don't cheapen it either. That's right. And I feel like it also comes back to providing a really good experience 100%. to your guests. Because yes. um, as a guest, when you're choosing an Airbnb, it's not because like, I mean, you have the option of going to so many hotels, yeah. to be honest. But like just that amazing experience of being kind of like at home, yeah, but in a whole different place. Absolutely. That's what uh, short term rentals would be. You know, a, a, a quality short term rental should feel at home. But like a hotel feel at the same time. Like like you know you're not at home, but it feels like you're at home. But at the same time, you know you're having a, an experience. That's what it should feel like. That's right. And um, now you also mentioned a few of the features that you like to include for your um, for your guests. Since you have quite a bit of like medical workers or nurses and things like that, they do require quite a bit of Wi-Fi. So how much do you spend on like Wi-Fi services, because like you could have like super top-notch Wi-Fi or kind of like the cheap one, yeah. but how do you know how much to spend on that? Yeah, and you know, your Wi-Fi is one of the most crucial amenities that you're going to provide. And I tell folks all the time, you know what kind of Wi-Fi you should provide? The best kind. Get the fastest speed possible. Don't cheapen a Wi-Fi. Get the fastest speed possible. Um, and because understand, that a lot of times, especially if you have units that can house a large group or a family, you're gonna have a lot of devices that are connecting. That's and right. on top of that, you still wanna make sure that, that you, um, if you're using the right television, the television is gonna have a Wi-Fi service where they can stream their favorite uh, apps as well. Um, so you should have Wi-Fi fast enough to accommodate everybody. And your Wi-Fi, you shouldn't only get the fastest one, but you having a fast Wi-Fi should actually be one of your selling points. The, a smart host would get the fastest Wi-Fi he can. He'll do a speed test oh. to get the speed of the Wi-Fi. He will take a screenshot of that speed test and add it to their photo reels and their photo That's carousel. That's a wonderful idea, actually, because it does prove to your future guests that, yeah, indeed, you do 100%. have 100%. And imagine somebody who's traveling on business. And they know they're going to need internet. And they're looking. They're trying to figure out which listing that they want to pick for, the, for, their, for their business travel. And they see like, oh, snap, this guy has, dang, 500 megabits per second <laughs> Wi-Fi speed? Now Sign you set up. apart. Now, I mean, that's just, that just one, I mean, again, little things you can do to help people make an informed decision. And the Wi-Fi speed, not cheapening that and letting them see that, hey, I did not cheapen this Wi-Fi for y'all. I made sure that I, that I invested in this Wi-Fi for every single one of y'all. Y'all should come stay with me. So 100%, not only should <laughs> you have fast Wi-Fi, have the fastest Wi-Fi you can get, then if you want to start going a little crazy, 
like we're about to start doing. Ooh. You can charge for Wi-Fi. That's fast. And you can charge more, give an upcharge per day for Wi-Fi. That's super fast. Oh, interesting. That it just literally like the just adds like a, a secondary source of income, I guess. Because oh, like yeah. you're already like adding more value to your oh, yeah. listing. Oh, yeah. 100 percent You know that's what the hotels do to us. That's right. You know, when you so go why stay, not transferring that why idea. Why not? That's why true. not? We can do that too. <laughs> and the cool thing is that all of these investments, I mean, they are not as expensive as we, as we may think, but it does add a crazy amount of value to your listing. 100%. Um, so when it comes to how much to invest, hmm. what would you say it's like within an appropriate range? Because we could easily just spend thousands of dollars yeah. into a yeah. certain listing. And yeah. then how do you recover from that much money? Um, you know, for one, Understand that when you're furnishing your listing, and I'm glad you framed that question in a form of an investment, because a lot of people frame that question, how much should I spend, right? And yes, you're spending money, but understand it's an investment. The fact that you put a furniture in, it's the use of that furniture that allows that property to continuously bring cash flow in for you. So look at it as an investment, and it 100% is an investment. And could you overspend? Yes. But the fact that you're looking at it as an investment, that means you need to treat every dollar as an investment. Is this dollar going to get me a return? Every item, every amenity, everything that you put in your listing, is it worth it? Is it worth the return on investment? Just like if I was doing a remodel, if I know I'm going to put a traditional tenant in that property, I'm not going to do a flip grade remodel on it <laughs> because it's not going to be worth that investment. The same goes on this side of the coin as well in the short term rental side. You want to make sure that whatever you're spending is actually worth spending. So we're not going to spend money on a decor or on a piece of item, a, a kitchen set or whatever that shouldn't be in there, that we know is not something that a guest needs or a guest requires or they want or they desire, that we know it's not going to get us a return on our investment. So, um, you know, when I was getting started in this business, uh, when I asked a question, you know, that's one of the questions that we were, that, that, that was also being asked because you can imagine this, it was so much newer when I first got started. So it's like, how much should we spend? You know, <laughs> and I remember somebody told me, they said, man, uh, just budget $20 per square foot. Oh, and I did the math. I was like, Jesus, that's expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Golly, that is expensive. Oh, wow. You know, what I mean? so it's a, a 1000 square foot building. I'm going to furnish it for $20,000 to furnish it. And so but I'm actually kind of glad I was told that in the beginning, though, because it set an expectation because now I was like, OK, there's it. That's the expectation. But then when I started furnishing, I realized it was way cheaper than that. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I tell people if you want to be. If you want to be pretty on par, a lot of times what we find is, and don't don't be going in here telling, like, oh, TJ said this, so this is what's going. <laughs> a lot of people look at me and say, oh, well, TJ said it. That is, <laughs> well, look, we're. I'm, I'll tell you what we're doing. I'll tell you what you could probably expect, and I'll tell you what you can do, what you can budget as conservative. Mm -hmm. So, you should expect to to furnish your units for about ten dollars a foot. And that's still a little conservative. We're furnishing our units for about six or seven dollars a foot, mm -hmm. but we've been doing this for a lot longer than a lot of people, other people have, and we built a lot of amazing relationships with the people that we get our stuff from, and our furnishings and and, and our um, items from. So we built a lot of great relationships, so we get pretty, pretty, pretty good pricing on a lot of our stuff. So I don't expect anybody to come in with five dollars or six dollars a foot mm -hmm. um, to furnish their units like we we are seven dollars a foot even. I'll say maybe ten dollars a foot. Um, if you want to be conservative, fifteen dollars a foot to be conservative. So if you want to say, "Hey, you know what?" Especially if you're new, you haven't furnished that many units before. Maybe this is even your first one. Say, so you know what? I'm going to go ahead and budget fifteen dollars a square foot. So that you know that apartment or that house you want to furnish is twelve hundred square feet, fifteen dollars a foot. Budget that. Um, realistically, you can do it for ten. Realistically, if you're a little savvy, you can get it done for ten. <laughs> even just a little savvy, which is spending. You can get it done for 10, uh, but go ahead and budget 15. And the cool thing is that the more you scale your uh, short term rentals, the better pricing they're going to get, the wiser you're going to get with certain purchases that you yeah, do. You're going to also find those little markets where you can get those quality items that you want to provide to yeah. your guests. And also, like, don't, you know, and you don't have to break the bank to get in and furnish these properties. Like, if you, if you can or if you need to, go ahead and rent the furniture to start. 
There's nothing wrong renting the furniture to start. I would just recommend don't stay renting, though, because at the end of the day, renting will only cost you more money on the back end. Mm -hmm. um, it gets you in the game, but it's going to end up costing you more money on the back end um, because the amount of money you would have paid every month for that furniture, I mean, it's going to be way more. You could have just bought it for that amount mm -hmm. and then some. <laughs> and then if you, if you decide to buy it, even after you've rented it, it's still going to charge you like almost the same amount like it's just way better to re and rental furniture is not as nice as furniture that you can buy right. you're very limited in your design choice when you're renting as well that's why i say it's okay to start with renting but don't stay renting these units because you you won't be able to stand out a lot as much as you want to with just renting that's right you can probably use that as a beginning point so yeah. you can start earning some income and saving a yeah. few of that yeah. income and just invest it into actually quality furniture 100 percent Thank you so much again, TJ. And thank you to our audience. We're super excited uh, to have you with us in this episode. And um, thank you again, TJ, for teaching us all of these tips and tricks for making sure that our properties are up to date and best in the market. Absolutely. We'll On see you in the next. the next episode. Bye bye.